Hey guys, today's video we are doing a knockdown texture wall. Really simple process. Basically all you need is a 4x10 drywall knife, an air compressor, a bucket of drywall all-purpose compound, and a hopper. Now if you're doing a small job like me, you can buy a little hopper. It's a great tool to own. If you're doing a whole basement or a house, then go rent the tool from the Home Depot. They make that available for you. You know, in situations where you're moving trims, we talked about this before with moving baseboards or casings, but in this case especially, the original wall was actually a painted vinyl cover on the drywall. It's a quarter inch, it's part of the traditional trailer home situation. But because of the extra paint coats, I've got to now cut the paint line for all these trims, or I risk this tearing that happened here, okay? So, we don't want it tearing. We'll take the time. Reduce the scope of work because when you expose brown paper like this, one of the things you've got to do, you've got to peel back all this extra fuzzy stuff. And you can't add drywall compound on that unless you seal it. So you've got to have something like Kills Original and you have to seal up the brown paper before you go and apply your drywall compound. Or all that moisture is going to race through into the drywall, the paper is going to blister underneath your drywall compound and you're left with a bubble. Every time you add another coat of mud or paint, it'll continue to bubble for the rest of your life. So make sure you seal it with oil before you move forward. And if you haven't picked up a pair of these pliers yet, check out this unique shape, this curved head. The design here is it grabs nails, you pinch gently, and then you can roll on the surface. And it distributes such a huge amount of that weight on a surface. It avoids making dents. So in finished wood, in drywall, anywhere where you've got to remove a nail, this makes sure you're not damaging the surface that you're prying against. Worth its weight in gold. And if you're not sure where to find it or they don't have it at your hardware store, you can always check out our video description. You can get the link to my favorite tools on Amazon. And you can get a pair of these delivered to you in the next couple of days. Now because of the way I'm finishing here, I'm going to be putting in a different trim all the way around these windows. Okay, we're not going to use this. We're going to put in some half inch pine and then we'll have actual window casings. So for me, I just want to make sure all these nails are hammered in nice and flush. Finish prepping your surface before you move forward while your tools are in your hand. Okay, don't go, oh, I'll get that later, it'll drive you nuts. So this is one of these moments where we're gonna use a little attention to detail. This is a, uh, a vinyl inside corner, okay? But this trim here that connects the end of the eight foot piece with the next piece is on a miter and it's gonna look like crap. So I'm taking this off, replacing it with another piece. And then I'm gonna have to use Probably a piece of shoe molding that goes floor to ceiling. I can buy that in 16 foot lengths. So I'll buy one and cut it so that it fits right to the top. And then I'll cut that piece in afterwards just before I paint. All right, so now that that's all out of the way, we're at a place in this progression where it's going to be more consistent with new construction. So let's just get past the green and realize we've got joints of drywall, okay? We've got torn paper that I had to seal with the oil spray. And if you have any torn paper in your job, peel the white paper off and expose the brown and oil seal it first. You'll thank me later. We're using mesh tape today, all right? Partially because, well, Let's just be honest, when you've got a mishmash of material, like vinyl and some painted and whatever else, you're not going to use regular all-purpose compound on that. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is we upgrade to a compound with a hardener. And whenever you're using a compound with a hardener, you've got the option to expense with the details of using paper tape, go straight to a pre-adhesive fiberglass mesh. Okay, and what this does, is it'll bond those uneven surfaces together no matter what kind of condition they're in and it'll give us the ability to create a good solid joint in otherwise not ideal conditions. 
We're just gonna apply the tape, use our six inch knife, make sure it has good bond. It's also our cutting knife, so when you're gentle, you can hold it against the wall. That's how you cut it, nice and simple. Now, in this case, I'm also going to break tradition. There's a joint here, a little crack. I'm actually going to use my compound with the hardener, and I'm gonna fill from edge to edge with the vinyl trim. I know this is vinyl. Vinyl is conducive with hardwood, or sorry, with, with drywall material if it has a hardener. We have vinyl trims for doing curves and arches. So there's no reason to believe that a painted vinyl wouldn't work well with a drywall compound with a hardener in it. We're blending a lot of science, but we're gonna create just a quick little flat step here in the wall. It's gonna look great, no reason to peel that off, okay? You know, I'm not much for experimenting, but some things, when you have enough life experience, even outside the box, it's not so much an experiment as a combination of wisdom and life experience. Here we go. Now the oil primer takes about five to 15 minutes to set up depending on the ambient air temperature and humidity. Uh, this paper tore underneath where that mesh tape is. Okay, just second up. Put in a second layer. Basically you wanna go from about a half an inch of drywall paper to mesh as, a, as an overlay. And you keep on doing that until you find another half inch of paper again. And you'll always have a good bond that way. You won't be disappointed. And again, don't worry about the corners. Whenever you're changing material, you always wanna use some sort, of a, some sort of a bead. We're gonna use shoe mold in this situation. That'll work out great. So now I've got my wall surface. I'm maintaining that crown at the top just because it's already integrated with the ceiling and all the way around and it's all painted, so why mess with that? We're gonna deal with this surface now and bring it up to speed. Right over here is my issue. So here's my brown paper. I had a huge peel and I'm gonna take my own advice here and I'm gonna mesh kind of like the whole thing. Layer after layer after layer. Give that surface of the wall more than just your mud. Not everybody does this, not everybody has to, but we got the drywall mesh tape out. We're gonna be making hot mud. This is the great time to minimize your risk. Instead of getting a five or a 10 year, and you get a 20 or a 50 year performance, take advantage of it. Woo, okay, here we go guys. Mixing compound with hardener, 101. I've got regular all purpose drywall compound here. I bought the, this stuff here. The plus three. This is a lightweight, you know, all-purpose compound, which is different than just an all-purpose compound. Um, it's nice for doing fills on outside corners, heavy details, but it's also nice because it's lightweight. So when I make my texture to spray on the wall, I'm gonna be using this. In the meantime, I'm gonna use this as my base for my compound. I'm adding a hardener. Generally speaking, if I'm on a job site and I'm doing a large project, I'll use Easy Sand 90, okay? And just powder and water and that's it. And I'll make my own mud and it has a pot life of about 90 minutes, an hour and a half. In this case, I'm using the 20. I'm gonna use the base of regular mud, add some 20, and then water to suit, because I don't have much to do, right? And a hardener is a hardener, it's a chemical reaction. It just speeds up the hardening, regardless of if it's just this or mixed together. So I'm gonna make my life simple, because I don't have my big mixing drill here with me. Oh, that's already done. Come on, honey, there we go. Because I'm down here in Florida renovating this trailer and I hardly had any tools. I had to go shopping, right? So I bought a simple Craftsman drill. It was really cheap. Oh yeah, this is, uh, needs water anyway, right? I always said, if you're using mud right out of the bucket, it's not ready to be applied to the wall. <laughs> it's just not silky smooth, right? There we go, that's more than plenty. So that'll be our foundation. I got about four scoops. That represents about how much mud I actually need. Okay, I'll use more of this later on in the project. I'm sure of it. It is always nice to have the option to add a hardener to your compound because it allows you to do multiple coats in one day. So I'm just adding about three or four cups here. There, that's plenty. Again, the reason I'm using the hardener, regular drywall compound does not stick to my fiberglass mesh tape. If you don't have the hardener in there, then it'll end up pulling it off the wall. Make one heck of a mess, all right? We're gonna add some water, because we're just dealing with a small amount. This chuck drill here is gonna be able to handle the mix just fine. I grabbed a paint mixer, and that's gonna work just great. Here we go, and the key is on the cord. Make sure when you're using a chuck mixer like this to use the key to tighten the, the chuck to the, your blade. Otherwise, it'll just chew it apart. All right.
that is still way too thick. We want it silky smooth. All right, let's have a look. So there's my mud. Now, I'm just gonna take my four by 10, perfect combination, all right? And if you haven't picked one of these up yet, grab a hawk mate. It goes between the handle and your hawk, okay? Locks all your tools in. You can have your four, your six, your 10, your 12. Really speeds things up, especially on smaller projects where you're up and down a ladder or a step or something. And you don't want to have your knife sticking out of your pockets because you get an accident. Here we go. And we're going to set it and then push to the side. If you go like this down the long run, a lot of times the tape will just peel right off the wall with you, okay? So push on and then clean it off. All right? And if I can reach, ah. That's the finish, okay? That's first coat. Don't try to be a hero here. We're simply bedding the tape. We're gonna be identifying where the high and low areas are here. And there's a few of them, my goodness. So I'm gonna put a really good bead right here across the middle because the wall has got a peak. It's acting like a butt joint. Now, all of these joints are actually butt joints. I don't have traditional drywall here, so I'm not filling like I would normally. It's gonna create a lot of extra work, but that's okay. The secret here is gonna be do horizontal lines one day, all right? And then you do your verticals the next day. You can't do both at the same time when you've got intersecting butt joints. Never works. See this? This is gonna be filled in. That'll give it a much more intentional look than having a bump to a smooth section to bump again, okay? I just think it's gonna look nicer, especially once I get the texture on there. Here we go. Don't forget. Not just that, but make sure you get all those spots that you covered up in fiberglass tape as well. Whew. And realize that with a 20 minute compound that's blended uh, 70, 30 regular mud, you're still gonna have half an hour to 45 minutes of working time. So don't panic. Be easy on yourself. This coat is not about sexy. This is about bedding the tape. <laughs> and setting yourself up for success afterwards. Second coats, we're gonna fan out about three feet in both directions, okay? And those will be the ones that start to make it look like a smooth wall. And because we're using texture, we're only gonna go with one more coat on this wall, and then we're gonna apply the texture. And that's one of the reasons why I'm using the texture, because this is all covered in butt joints. Traditional mud, to make this smooth and pretty, it would take me probably, Probably a full week. Three coats that go in the verticals and three or four coats going horizontals. Alternating days, that's a lot of work. So by doing this, I'm gonna cut my production time down by about four days. One day to prep, get the first coat. Second day to wide note all my joints. Third day, I'll just get right on to spraying the texture and doing that knockdown. Okay guys, so it's next day, all right? We've got all this dried, we're gonna do second coat now. Um, you're going to see a little bit of the mesh grain poking through, and that's okay. It's not the actual mesh. It should just all be mud, all right? So if you didn't, didn't use enough mud and you still have mesh showing through, that's fine, but you gotta cover it in this coat for sure. And if it's covered, you're in great shape. Now take your six inch, you could use a four inch knife or whatever. We're just gonna look for ridges, okay? We're just looking to clean bumps, like right here. See this? Just cleaning the ridge. Big bumps are our enemy here because we're trying to make things smooth, right? And if we start with a piece of mud that's really thick, then we have to fill the whole wall to that height to make it smooth. Make sense? So do what you can to eliminate ridges before you get started. Okay, that kind of stuff is in your way. Beautiful. Now, I've done a lot of drywall videos. I've taught the entire course how to be a professional drywaller from A to Z. You can check those videos out, but in this one I'm gonna show you the mud right out of the pan. If you're not familiar with it, this is a lightweight pre-mixed drywall compound. Okay, now, when you work it, you tool it we call it, it gets a little creamier. 
Now you can spread this. But it's still not very sexy, is it? It's like it, these puck marks. You get rid of them by pulling the mud thinner. Less is more in drywall. See that? A thin coat, you don't get puck marks. All right? That's really good to know as a, as a newbie. If you're new to drywall mud, okay? Less is more because it gives you a smooth finish. A smooth finish doesn't need to be sanded as much. Because all you're doing is just changing the texture of the mud ever so slightly with one or two quick passes. So what we're going to do is demonstrate mud right out of the pail. And then I'm going to show you the proper way to work. Okay. I'm using a six inch knife here. One down the middle and one on the side here. Can you see all those bubbles? Okay. See this mud is on really thick. And so you see all the bubbles. All right. And this one's a lot thinner, but you'll see Real quickly, there's, as, as it's tr starting to try to dry, little bubbles are appearing right on the edge of where the mud and the wallpaper are. The way we solve that is by going really thin. Okay, super thin coat. Now you can actually see that line through there. Okay. And we want to use a little bit of pressure on, on this tip of the knife. There we go. Now that is a proper second coat. But the reason I don't like this mud like this, okay, is because it's a lot of work to press that to get it that thin. Instead, I'm going to want to use my tool here to speed this up. And this is mud right out of the pail, okay? See how much work and time and effort it takes here to work with this? Now I'm going to show you the secret that the pros use so we don't have to work so hard and we can work fast. And it's right down here. For every pail of water, you're going to put in um, about 350 mils. You see that? It's like a small bottle of water, okay? That's how you mix. I'm going to take our drill. I'm going to take a proper blade for mixing. This is good for drywall compound or thin set. And you're going to want to hold on for dear life with your feet on the side of this pail or it's going to want to spin around. So you want to start really slow. Now this drill is tricky to work with. It's kind of variable speed, but it's how, how hard you squeeze. I'm going to most likely make a mess of myself here. And you'll also see I got the drill right up against my body so it doesn't start to spin and break my wrist. Ooh, nice and gentle, honey. Here we go. Get that water mixed in a little bit. Okay. There we go. It took off on me, okay. <laughs> what a wild ride. This is not the right drill for this process. But like I mentioned before in the other videos, I'm renovating this whole trailer on a work visa and only brought down a bucket of my favorite hand tools. <laughs> okay, all right. We're gonna call that good enough before I make a mess. <laughs> now, we have silky smooth mud. See the difference? The difference in the texture here. You don't want to have too much on your hawk, but it, it is a little bit runny. Now, I mentioned before it's really difficult to do taping on two different directions, right? So, we're going to start with just our verticals today, and then I'm going to do the horizontals tomorrow off camera. Now this is much easier to work with. I don't have to use as much pressure. And really that's what it is. It's all about the pressure. The more pressure you use, the more fatigue, right? So if you want to enjoy this process, you don't want to work too hard. You want to be smart. You want to be artistic. That requires you to you only need a couple fingers. Right down the middle, set your depth, remove the excess. Come over here, pressure on that corner. Don't worry about what's going on here. That's part of the horizontal, okay? Just trying to get that vertical relatively smooth. Now, there's a thin ridge of mud right here. These ridges can be knocked off the next day, all right? So don't worry about it. This is really what it's all about. This is just about getting the verticals. Now, yeah, I did that earlier this morning. It's not quite hard enough for me to mud yet. So we'll have to keep this second coat for later. We'll do that piece at the same time as all the horizontals. Now, this 
is on pretty thick up here. Wow. Remember, the goal here is to prepare this for texture. One of the reasons we're going with the um, knockdown is because we have the ability to uh, apply it as thin or thick as necessary. So when your walls are in really rough shape, you can put it on a little bit thicker. Wait a little extra time before you work it, and you set the depth of the wall with the spray texture and not with your drywall compound. As long as you have something that's relatively smooth to start with, you'll have something relatively smooth to finish with when you do the knockdown, okay? So this is not about perfection. This is about we're prepping the wall for a spray. So don't get too picky. The less time you spend on this, the better. Just make sure it's thin enough that it's not bubbling. If it starts to bubble, run over the bubbles and take a little more material off. I'm going to suggest you try to wait till the next day, but if you start right where you feathered off, you can come across and then lift where that joint is. This is actually really interesting because this is bubbling a lot more than I expected. And so that's it. You can use the tool this way or you can roll it in your hand over your knuckles or in front of your knuckles. Okay, so that, that's going this way. Roll it back here onto your knuckles to pull it this way. All right, and that gives you really good control. And this is what I'm saying, this area right here. Almost impossible to do this corner perfectly from both angles. There you go. All right, here's a great lesson to learn. You gotta keep dirt out of your mud, <laughs> okay? So we clean the sides of the pail the best we can, okay? And then we take a damp sponge. Always keep a sponge in your pail with your water and your mixing blade, all right? And you wanna rub the top and the side of the pail. You don't wanna let mud build up on the sides. And the reason for that is it'll dry. And then when you go to scoop fresh mud out, those dry chunks will end up in your brand new mud and you'll be miserable and you'll be upset. You're like, darn it, Jeff, how do you keep your mud clean? Well, this is it. That's the whole secret, okay? Flatten it out a little bit, make sure it's all nice and clean. And then when you're all done, ounce of water on top, okay? There's always gonna be a certain amount of evaporation that takes place. The next day on the job, you can take the lid off and you can grab the mixing blade and mix that all back in. All right, because it's constantly drying. This is, this is only plastic. There's constantly moisture being pulled out of it. Over time, that's why you always have to mix your own mud, because depending on how long it's been on the shelf, depending on how thick it is, right? And you don't know until you know. Now, now we have clean mud that's not gonna get full of dirt, okay? It's got a lid on it, it'll keep it sealed up, and it won't go bad, and you can stick it in a corner, and even if you gotta wait a week or two to come back, it'll be perfect condition, and you can just pop the lid and go right at it right away. So always store your mud so that you save it because it's 20 bucks a bucket. And it takes time and energy to get it to that creamy, smoothy way you like it. So protect it with your life. All right, guys, now we're at that point in the project where you get to decide if your patching is good enough. Now, in a lot of cases, if it's brand new drywall work and you're gonna be doing the surface texture, you don't have to worry about it. You're just gonna to wanna to give it a quick sand, use a radio sander on the walls. I like 180 grit, maybe a 220, and a hand sander for the little details, right? and you want to use a tool. Now, here's what I'm going to recommend, just to get rid of these ridges, okay? If you got any bumps, get rid of them. But now I'm looking, because this is an old wall, I'm also looking for, I'm going to do one more coat because everything here was a surface, kind of like a butt joint, right? So it's nasty. And I'm looking for nail holes now. I'm going to put dents on them, okay? Because remember, a dent can be filled, a bump, it has to be feathered and that takes a lot more work so if you got any damage on the wall just make it a dent most of the time when a nail goes on a wall it explodes the product as well so you have a ridge so we're just checking for anything like that it looks pretty good we're going to give this quick sand and for most of what i'm doing here i just got to get this detail around this round edge right okay make sure that that's perfect and make sure that I don't have any really thick ridges, that I don't want that to show up. When I go to do a spray texture, a thick ridge will translate in a lot of cases, unless you're using a huge amount of texture. So, let's just take a look at next day. 
This has actually been a couple days, guys, okay? It was over the over long weekend. You can see there's still a little bit of water sitting on top. Most of it is soaked in, become part of the mud. So now we're going to just scoop that out and put it on our tray here. Yeah, it's a little sloppy, and that's fine. We're gonna work it in, okay? Make it nice and creamy smooth. Silky sexy. Here we are. Ready to work again. Like I said, this is gonna last um, even over the course of like weeks if necessary. Now, this compound does go moldy at some point, all right? So don't take something like this, throw a lid on it, throw it in the back of your shed and go, I'll see you next year, honey. No, just throw it out if you're done. But <laughs> if you uh, are like me and you're always fixing something, um, it'll last a good few weeks, maybe even a couple months, depending on the conditions. Now, I know, I know this isn't the way I usually do drywall, but there's a unique situation here. Remember, we're on vinyl wallpaper. So this is what happens. Check this out right here, actually. That's the most obvious example. This is uh, my second coat of quick set, and it's still got two huge bubbles, okay? Okay, it's still got two huge bubbles here, which is why I took the time to sand the entire surface before I do my third coat. Because of the condition I'm working in, I wanted to remove the surface of any bubble that was covered with mud. Little mini balloons everywhere, okay? Now I can fill those and get a smooth surface so that when I do spray my texture, you know, we're not gonna run into issues. If I do everything first and I come back and I scrape, oh, I'm gonna have pit holes everywhere. Even though you're spraying texture, you're not giving the wall 100% coverage of new mud. You're just adding some texture to the wall and then you're flattening it out because we're gonna do that texture, okay? And so your pits and your heavy ridges, all of that is gonna translate through the wall. You'll see it when you paint. So you gotta make sure you got at least a nice smooth surface to work with before you go and spray texture. If you're working with new drywall, that's easier. In this situation, it's a little more work. Everything is dry like a butt joint, like I said. And there's a different relationship with the way the moisture, everything has to dry into the room. That's why we get the air bubbles, all right? You'll have the same effect if you're trying to do a skim coat on a wall that's got a finished painted surface because the acrylic in the paint is a bit of a waterproofer. Not uncommon when you're renovating a bathroom, for instance, and you're trying to blend new drywall from your tub surrounding with your old wall, and then you're like, hey, why is the paint bubbling? That's because your bathrooms have acrylic in the paint. That's why it's a bathroom paint, and it's kind of waterproofing. And so what happens is the only way the moisture can escape is into the room, and that's what creates your bubbles. That's why multiple coats and getting it on nice and thin is the solution to that. We're going to just talk about hawk management real quick. This is what I'm going to call dirty mud, okay? Because I've got an exposed edge with dirt, and my knife ran up past the edge. I can't be guaranteed that my mud is clean anymore. Man, you'd think I'd be able to get a decent pass here. Wow. That looks like a hell on camera, doesn't it? I'm making sure that I'm separating dirty mud from the clean mud on the hawk now. Okay, dirty mud. I can take it off, just storing it while I work, knowing the difference. I don't want to mix them together. Okay, so now I got a clean knife on the dirty mud side, clean mud to do my fill. The worst thing you can do is a, when you're working with drywall, just get dirt in your mud. It just drags a line all the way through the finished surface. There we go. All right, now I'm done this area. This mud's garbage, so I'm gonna go find a garbage can and throw it in. to sand again. I'm just going to clean up the edges here and then um, get rid of any of these little ridges. That'd be the only thing we do. Now we've got to let this dry. I'm going to set up the texture spray machine. We'll show you the tools. We'll show you the secrets. We'll show you the tips and the tricks. It's amazing how many different variations and possibilities you can get with one machine, an air compressor and a, and a mud pump. Here we are guys. Today it's spray day. We are going to be putting in our texture and knocking it down. And I've set this up. We're gonna take this one step at a time here because it's kind of crucial. You don't wanna experiment while you're doing your room, right? So 
We're gonna walk through, really there's four major things that you've gotta have some control over. Okay, there's variables, four of them, and here they are. Air pressure, because we're using air tools. There's a trigger on the air tool, and so it's a variable speed trigger. So what we're gonna do is we're always gonna spray full open. That eliminates that variable, okay? Then you've got your mud. Uh, we're using all-purpose drywall compound. We're gonna have to mix it. And so how you mix it will determine the flowability of that compound, and then that'll mix with the air, and you'll get a certain spray pattern based on how wet that material is. So we're gonna experiment a little bit with that today. That's what the board is set up behind me for. So we're gonna set our constant air pressure. We're gonna have constant open flow. We're gonna get rid of the variability with the mixture of the mud itself. And I suggest if you're gonna do this at your house, get an extra sheet of drywall somewhere, test out your spray pattern a little bit until you're comfortable with it, all right? And then the last variable is how long you're holding the gun in one place. So it's kind of like spray painting, okay? So as long as you can have a consistent movement whatever that looks like for you on your test board, okay? This is the thing. We can get rid of those other variables. We're gonna show you by spraying out three different mixes of the mud, okay, what effect it has on the wall. So this way, you can get a whole lot of life experience before you even buy the tools. Speaking of, this is the knockdown knife. This is from Anvil, and this was available at the Home Depot. Um, we'll put some links in the video description for you guys if you wanna order it in. Here we are, let me get this out of the box. That's it, that's a knockdown blade. The only purpose of this blade is to knock down texture. It's very thin, it's somewhat flexible, okay? I can see that. And the idea here is we're gonna be passing over mud and it, we want, I don't know how to show this, we want the blade to have some flexibility. So when it meets up the mud, it's, it's, it's knocking it down, but it's not scraping it off. That's what I'm trying to get at. So it's all about pressure. Now, they come with these lovely wing nuts, and we're gonna have to take these off first. It's funny how they always put the wing nuts on these screws. Every other kind of fastener that's out there <laughs> doesn't come like that. We get the washers off there as well. It should go in rather easily. I am not having any success with that. Okay, plan B, when you're losing your mind, we're gonna go reverse on the screw, holding the nut till I feel it click. Ultimately, that was the problem. This locking nut did not leave enough room on there for this nut. Be careful not to cross thread that sucker, okay? My goodness, that will be a nightmare. All right. Woo! They could have made the screws a little bit longer, Anvil. I mean, you know, another thread or two isn't gonna kill anybody, huh? The next tool, of course, is the Husky Pro Hopper gun, again, available at the Home Depot. And you know, for all the grief that I give Home Depot for their pricing and their, some of their quality issues, I know Husky is actually a pretty decent tool company. And it is awfully convenient to go shopping at a store where you know where everything is, right? So that is what I like to do. I like to go to one store that's convenient where I know where everything is so I'm not wasting my time running around the aisles. Man, that is really locked up tight for a piece of plastic, huh? By the way, when you go shopping for these, make sure you get one that has never been opened, all right? Because there's things in here that we're gonna need. Oh, isn't that cute? That keeps you from pouring it all over yourself like I did in my last video. Okay, and here's what we need. The stuff in the bottom of the box, okay? If you get one that's already been opened, chances are somebody bought one took it home, took out one of these, and, or one of those nozzle tips, okay? And they put it on their existing gun because it got damaged, and then they put it all back in the box and return it. And a lot of people at the Home Depot don't take the time to open the box and understand what was supposed to be in it. So, you know, but if the tape seal is broken, items should not be allowed to be returned. Stop taking things that have been opened, Home Depot. All right, drives me crazy. That's Jeff's rant for the day, huh? So first thing we gotta take care of is the gun. That's already got a nozzle in there. One second there, I'm gonna just make sure. That, yeah, that is done. And you can see that when I pull the trigger, it pulls the nozzle back inside that hole. And so you can imagine if inside that hole, here's my nozzle, okay? And it seals up on an O-ring in there. When I pull it back, 
I get a little bit of flow rate. But if I pull it all the way open, I get a lot of flow rate. And that is why it's a variable that we've got to maintain some control over. And they gave me this to go on this, but they did not give me any Teflon tape. Got to go get the plumbing kit and get some Teflon tape. Here we go, guys. Teflon tape. This is what we use to air seal the joint. You know, in a lot of places and a lot of applications, they put the tape in the box for you. But not here, apparently. Here we go. With the threads. Okay, so you can control that tape. Okay. All right, now, make sure that it's not sitting over the edge. Then we're just going to roll this on. That's the quick connect for the air hose. And careful when you're using a wrench. Okay, this is, this is the part. See the neck? curve on the head here. You want it to be going clockwise. That gives you the, your, your power. If you hold it the other way, the only power you have is in how much you're squeezing these two bars together because this is where it's going to slip off. Okay. So if you want to be strong when you're using a wrench, put the curve neck underneath and go clockwise. That'll make an eight-year-old child strong enough to do this because it doesn't have to squeeze very hard. That's on really good. Okay, guys. So we're going to show you this because these come in the box. There's different size holes for the different kinds of texture work that you might be doing. So this hole is really tiny and this hole is kind of the middle, the mama bear, and here's the papa bear hole. So you just undo your neck, slides right off, and there's that o-ring I'm talking about, okay? And there we go. This is pushing air, that hole, and this is where your mixture is going to be flowing through. So it fills up the whole area. So when you put this on it, that's closed. Now what that does is that's going to be tight up against the, the metal here. So there's no, no mixture flowing. And as you pull it back, the mud fills up that cone and it, the air pressure sprays it out. So we're going to start off with the monster size hole, just because I like to have lots of content coming out. There's no sense putting on a tiny hole and taking all day to do this. So we're going to experiment here a little bit because I don't do knockdown texture for a living. I've done it before, but the guy already had his gun set up. So I'm not sure if this is the right size hole. We'll figure it out together. And you can learn from my mistakes. All right. At least I'm going to be standing here doing all this pressure testing. If it comes out like a big blob of mud right out of the gate, we'll just switch out the nozzle. It won't be a big issue. We're going to keep these handy in case we need them later. There are different guns in the market, okay? Some of them go square like this, and some of them have an elbow. So when you're spraying, your bucket is actually staying upright. You can do that. What we're going to do, we're going to get our gear clamp on here. There we go. We're going to turn this on. We're going to point this away from the handle, okay? So I can have one hand here, one hand up here when I'm working. Now, I'm going to bring the gear clamp back over. And you'll see the neck here has actually got slots, so you can put this under a fair amount of pressure. When the screw starts getting shavings coming out, <laughs> it's time to stop, all right? Uh, stripping that thread isn't going to do you any good, so there we go. Now we're pretty much set up, all right? Now let's go mix some mud. And we'll load it into the bin and we'll give this a good try. All right, so the mud I'm going to start with is not all-purpose compound right out of the pail. This has been mixed already. So we've been watching the series, uh, made a couple coats and made the last coat thinner. That's what I'm starting with. And it's also been sitting for a week. So just a reference, um, I don't recommend just taking the mud out of the bucket and throwing it in. It's going to be too thick. It's not going to flow. Even this, after sitting for a week, doesn't have any flowability. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little bit of help. Let's see if this has any flowability now. Okay, see how that's moving? That. I don't like that. We're going to go a little thinner, but we're going to do the test with it first. So you see what happens, okay? Oh yeah, see that's not flowing very well, is it? Here's another one of our variables, and this is the air. Now right now I'm sitting just shy of 80, okay? Sorry, just shy of 100. I'm going to be able to read. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, I'm at about 92. I'm going to just release this down to 80. So now we have constant pressure. We've got that adjusted. Um, if we find that the flow's too fast and the nozzle's too big, we can always come over here and raise the pressure up so that there's more air coming out, which makes the job quicker for you. But what we're going to find here, I think, is that it's hardly flowing. Now, this has got an air control as well. Remember that little pinhole? That air is always on when this is open. So you've got to crank this open and then pull on the handle right away or you're going to lose all your air pressure. Now, my particular tank should be able to keep me at 80 while I'm working, so it should be not a problem. First try with what we're going to call the dry mud. Yeah, that didn't flow well enough. So that made a hell of a mess, didn't it? Speaking of a mess, 
I gotta get in here and clean this out now. Mm. Yeah, that is not gonna work. Okay, let me get cleaned up and we'll try a proper mixture. So we got lots of mud here, still have a half a pail, but take my sponge here. I'm just gonna add a sponge of water. That's what we're using for flowability. Just enough to like really wet it up, okay? Okay, there we go. Not too fast, I don't wanna wear it. Now I got flowability. That's moving around real good. I'm also thinking that my nozzle might need to be changed because when the mud was there, it really blew it out. And I'm looking for a little bit more control. I'm gonna switch it down to the medium size, okay? Make sure you hold the handle and you wanna swap that out. Make sure the gasket's in place too. It'll pop off sometime. Next test. Get a little bit of this in here. Now, because I still have some of that old mud in the neck, I'm gonna just spray the bottom of this sheet, but then I'm gonna come over here and spray this one. When you do this kind of work, you don't have to wait long before you knock it down. Okay, and you don't go like this, you'll scrape it all off. That's knocked down. You see how that finishes off? It flattens all the ridges. If you don't have a nice enough spread, okay, you're gonna get thin and heavy spots. To avoid that, we really wanna have the texture coming out very consistently. Now we've made a couple of changes. We'll try again. I'm gonna spray the bottom first, and then I'll do the one in the middle once I get to my mud. Feeling a lot better about this now. Here we go. See how much control you have? That's nice. Okay, so we just sprayed this. Only sat there for about 10 seconds. Let's try the knockdown. Nope. What happened to my blade? That's this, that's this blade causing that problem. Huh. Well, look at that. That blade isn't straight. Just tightening on those screws has put a warp in it. I'm not happy about that. I guess it's just because this metal here is just a thin aluminum and just the torque of that screw bit has warped it. Well, that's really good to know. Well, if you do end up buying one of these, make sure you put those on Get it started with the screwdriver, but only tighten them by hand. That is crazy. Okay. Well, we're gonna go back and use another tool. One you might already own, because if you're at this point, you have a four by 10 hand trowel. Wow, they didn't put their name on the product, just the box. That's just bloody amazing, isn't it? All right, well, this is good. I'm glad I bought this and tried it out. I'm glad I got had so that you won't. Um, anvil, it's synonymous with steel, isn't it? You know, like actually hammering steel and forging. Yeah, so, Nice, nice plan words. They're, they're so impressed with the quality of their material, they didn't even put their name on the tool. That's a sure sign, isn't it? This is just my opinion, but if you're gonna go shopping and you uh, see Anvil products, you can be sure that if they make this tool with zero respect for the end user, knowing it's a piece of junk, everything else coming out of their factory with their name on it is probably the same. So begs the question, why in the hell is a company with a good reputation even selling them at all? Because you know what? If you're gonna sell something and it's garbage, makes you think that everything else in the store might be the same quality level. Listen, if you're watching this video and you've done this work before or you're in the trades and you've got better quality tools, hit up the comment section and tell people where they can shop and what the brand of the tool is because I can't recommend that, all right? I don't know, big surprise. It was affordable, but now I know it wasn't affordable, it was cheap, there's a difference. A couple minutes now for this to set up. Using my four by 10, gentle pressure is the key here, okay? Just a couple fingers. And that's knocked down. You see the difference? The difference is it dries out really quick when you've been supplied with an air tool, okay? And so by, by setting up this on your sheet, yeah, that's just a mess already. Setting this up on a, on a drywall, you can get an idea of how much texture you like, okay? And how long, how long you want to have it, the density of the texture, all this kind of stuff. And you can make an adjustment. Now we're gonna go a little bit thinner for the last spray, okay? And we're gonna try to go maybe a little bit more coverage. Just a little bit more coverage. Just a touch. This is for the purpose of the test, okay? Not planning on using this mud. This is definitely a lot thinner. I'm just mixing it by hand in here for the purpose of a test, okay? That is super thin. Sweet, here we go. 
Now listen, I know there's a lot of different textures out there. Nobody uses stipple anymore, but they still sell it in every store, so imagine that. If you, as a DIYer, can make a smooth wall following my drywall videos, or you can do knockdown texture, then you've got all the arsenal you need for your renovations, right? You can have a smooth wall, you can have a textured wall. You don't need to know how to do nine different kinds. So stick with one and you'll be just fine. Here we go. We're gonna do this wall now with even wetter mud. Now we're gonna give that a couple minutes to set up again, and then we'll try the trowel, and we'll see how that worked out. All right, here we go. This will be a quick check while it's still super wet. And you'll see what happens. Same thing, all right? It ends up wiping off. It's, it's not dry enough yet, all right? So we're gonna give it a couple more minutes. I recommend about a three to five minute window between when you spray it and when you wipe it down. That's all. So you can do it yourself in a room. You can do a wall, right? And you can do an overlap in a corner if you have one. And then you can just put the bucket down, turn off the air, let the tank fill up a little bit, right? And then go back and knock it down. Not a big deal. You can manage this on your own time just fine because between three and 10 minutes is your working time, in my experience, okay? If you've got a different experience, let me know in the comments section. But if you're gonna make your mud this wet, you've got some working time, okay? If you're in a hurry and you've got a partner, you can go a little drier and then, you know, 30 seconds to one minute behind you, he can be knocking down the walls. That's great. All right, it's been a couple minutes now. Let's jump in and do this, all right? And just a nice light skim. You'll notice if you open the blade, okay, you're gonna scrape it off. But if you keep it really closed, you're gonna knock it down. And you're not even gonna leave ridges on the wall. Okay, so there you go. Now we have an idea what we're gonna get for a finished product. Now you'll see, this is my spray pattern. You can actually see it. So where the nozzle is, is where most of the material is. Just a thought. We're gonna try spraying not so close to the wall. So I don't force all the material in one little spot. Okay, we're gonna back up a little bit and let it spread out a little bit more. Hopefully we get a little more consistent result because we don't wanna have flattened down sections. And then, so this is beautiful. This is too flat for me, okay? So I am gonna stick with this ted, mud, mud texture, the one that's in the pail now. I found that this gave me a better result. When it was too wet, I got too much of a concentration line and this is a better distribution, all right? Um, I'm just moving my, my equipment around, cleaning up so I'm ready to spray. I grabbed this, I wanna just check this out. We've been, we sprayed this about 20 to 25 minutes ago. Okay, look at this. That's pretty darn dry. Wow, it's almost completely dry. Just the heavy spot in the middle. This is, here's a clean hand, okay? Completely dry. That's awesome. That's how fast the mud sets up when it's applied with the air pressure, all right? It's like getting super dried, speed dry while it's getting thrown at the wall. <laughs> Just so you have an idea, all right? So um, if you wait 20 minutes before you do your knockdown, you're in a lot of trouble. You're just gonna have a speckled wall. Just to eliminate the need for a third coat and a good sanding, but you also have to remember that when you look, look at that spray, if there are any ridges or lines on that wall, even after you do the knockdown, you're still gonna see that ridge or that line. So you might not need another coat, but just be sure, get rid of any of these ridges like this. Can you see that one? Okay, so that's a ridge you don't wanna see. So we're just gonna nice and light, get rid of it. Piece of cake, right? Quick pass, make sure that this wall is ready for the spray. Remember, once you spray, the only way to fix something like that is to scrape all the spray off the wall and start over again with two more coats of mud. So this makes sense to be just a little picky right now. Remember, you don't want your friends and family to come over and go, wow, you did that all by yourself. You want them to say, wow, you did that all by yourself? Now you're not gonna be able to see white on white, right? Just use your hand. You know, you'll be able to pick up, feel any ridges out there. There's a ridge right there. You can't even feel it, see it right now. But you don't wanna know, like under what conditions, how the sun comes up and down, as the earth axis changes around the year. What you don't see today, you might see six months from now. So be picky. So here's my preparation. Um, and it's gonna be different for everybody. In a lot of cases, when you're doing texture, you're doing the ceiling and the walls. So you don't really need to tape much off. If you have existing windowed casements, get the tape and drape, like I did in the video for when I was um, painting the outside of this property. All right, you can tape and drape your windows. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my spray shield from when I paint while I'm putting up the texture, okay? I'm just gonna tape off my moldings so that when I'm done spraying, I can peel these off and have a clean line. And I'm just gonna tape that ridge right there. 
That'll give me a really nice look when I'm finished, hopefully. I'm going to tape this off as well. You'll notice that when we were spraying, we had a pretty consistent situation going on there. The spray didn't go everywhere too badly, but it is a spray system. And so you're going to get texture bouncing all over the place. If you want, you can tape and drape in plastic. I'm going to use a spray shield and I'm also going to use damp rags. So I'm going to spray. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to get my damp rag. I'm going to wipe the ceiling down. We're going to reduce the amount of texture in here. We're just filling to this level. Because what I want to do is be able to do this with one hand because I'm going to be holding the spray shield with the other. Okay. Because this is wood paneling. I'm not concerned about that as much as I am on the ceiling. Okay. Now I need three hands. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna stop there. My arm's sore. <laughs> we'll let the compressor fill up again. We're gonna let this dry out a little bit. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna skim that section first. No way I can spray the whole wall in that three to five minute window. And well, actually, maybe there is, but I don't wanna work that hard. I have a torn ligament in my thumb, which is why it's always swollen. So I can't really squeeze as well as I used to. I gotta get myself a doctor and set up a surgery. It's, oh well, life happens, eh? Just knocking down and flattening things out really gentle like. Learning a lot here. This needs to stay clean. A. B. Going left to right is running me into problems because uh, the wall, because of this joint, I created a line there. So I'm going to go up and down instead. Yeah, that's going to be less, less damaging. And I was probably a little bit quick out of the gate to get to this too, but I was just dying to see. So where I've flattened it out, I'm going to spray a little more texture. Okay, because they can do a repair on this. That's not an issue. Too aggressive on the weight, that's for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, here we go. It's nicer coming down than it is across. Be conscious to keep the knife clean while we're working. We don't want to let the mud build up on this because it's already half dry. And then you'll end up just dragging it through the rest of the stuff, right? Here we are. Come from the top down. Better. Better, better. Yeah, you really just want to be patient and give that a couple minutes to set up. Now I'm learning my lesson. So areas where the mud hit mud dried much quicker than areas where the mud hit the vinyl. And that stands to make sense actually, doesn't it? That was almost logically expected. I got one spot up there where the vinyl, and it, it, it made a mess of it. So I'm going to hit that again, and just above the window, I'm going to hit that again too, because the vinyl was there. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot all of the vinyl specifically, and then I'm going to mix and take another batch, and I'm going to shoot the drywall in a few more minutes. So then I can knock it all down together. Just starting to realize that had I skim coated the whole wall, this would not be an issue. So this is where the white rag run comes in, right? Basically, just wiping the compound off the areas where I don't want to have a textured wall. The faster you get to this, the easier it is. <laughs> but it's just drywall compound, and until there's paint on it, it'll always just wipe right off. So if you miss something, don't panic. Oh, <laughs> just get it later. I want to give that about two more minutes. And then I'm going to spray all the drywall compound areas. And then we're going to flatten it all down together. Why does it sound like I'm playing basketball in here? <laughs> Time to get the rest of this, and then we finish the knockdown work. You'll notice that uh, when I'm spraying, I'm not going in an S pattern. I noticed that when it was on that drywall, the demonstration, I had an S line. So what I'm doing, I'm doing like oval loops, okay? I'm finding it, the application is going on a lot more consistent that way. Worth giving it a shot. Oh, we're gonna give this three to five minutes. 
and uh, I'm just going to pick something inconspicuous, like over in a corner where there's going to be window trim. I'm going to test it out like this, right? Because if that knocks down and doesn't go flat, then it's probably ready. Okay. Well, obviously, letting that sit for just a couple minutes, what a huge difference. Look at that. It knocks down perfectly. Now, you're not going to have the difficulty I'm having if you're using new drywall and new drywall mud. Because drywall paper will soak this up at the same rate as the mud. All right? But since I'm mixing this up with the vinyl, I'm running into difficulties with the drying time on the vinyl, even though I waited before I shot the rest of this wall. So, I will suffer through that the old-fashioned way by trying to be patient. Yeah, it's just not ready yet. Okay. You know, if it's not ready, it's not ready. It's definitely easier to knock down once it's sat for a few minutes. All right. Um, you don't have those same kind of issues with... Uh, with, with the dragging it off, right? You don't have to have such delicate pressure. We'll do a spot over here. That is really nice. Some good control here. And that's exactly the look we're going for. So we've got like two different depths on the wall. And that's what texture is. I love it. All right, so now no matter what lighting I use in the room, once it's painted, you're gonna have little tiny shadows all over the wall to accentuate that texture. It's gonna look really, really good. Okay, because it's half dry, you can move pretty quickly on it. Makes quick work of this. All right, now we're just gonna wait till the vinyl is dry enough to knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> Might be another 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm going to go finish this off camera and we're just going to jump right into the painting. We'll do some priming painting and show you the difference in the technique. Cheers. <laughs> 